What's up guys, my name is Brandon and I hope you guys had a great Christmas and if you got a new iPhone or a new Apple product, let me know in a comment down below which one you got. But anyways, this past week was very quiet as expected with just a public beta release on Monday. We got iOS and iPadOS 15.3 beta 1, watchOS 8.4 beta 1, and all of the other beta releases for those in the public beta program. But in this video, we're going to be giving you guys an update on how iOS and iPadOS 15.3 beta 1 have been running for the past week or so. We're going to discuss iOS 15.2 a little bit further. We're going to cover some recent Apple news, 2022 Apple products, and more. All right, so let's first start off by talking about iOS 15.3 beta 1. And this has been a very strange release ever since the start. I mean, first off, it leaked ahead of time which I cannot tell you guys the last time an iOS version leaked before Apple released it themselves. So that was very strange. And then it released to developers on a Friday, which is also very strange. And then of course we got the public beta release this past Monday. So super strange things going on with 15.3 beta one, but it's also one of the best performing betas I've seen on iOS 15 period, let alone for a first beta. So we'll talk more about that here in a moment. But first off, I want to start by talking about ProMotion on 15.3 beta 1 because I've seen several people say that ProMotion feels better on 15.3 beta 1. They're saying that there are improvements to the scrolling speed with that 120 hertz, you know, the refresh rate on these new iPhone 13 Pro displays. Everybody is saying that ProMotion is better and everything is smoother, especially scrolling in Safari. But I tried to see this myself. I really wanted to believe that it was better here on iOS 15.3, but it's just not. I mean, I use my iPhone 13 Pro here, which is on iOS 15.2, compared to my 13 Pro Max here, which is on 15.3 beta one. I put them side by side through several tests and nothing looked different at all. So I think a lot of people are just seeing placebo, just thinking that everything's smoother on 15.3 beta one in terms of the ProMotion display, but it's exactly the same as 15.2 to me. And I've run several different tests to try to see a difference. And the main reason I think a lot of people are saying that is because the new Mac West Monterey beta 12.2 beta one did improve Safari scrolling on the new M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBook Pros. So it did get smoother on the Mac, but as far as the iPhone, iOS and iPad OS as well, nothing has changed in terms of how smooth that scrolling is. Unfortunately, I really wish it was better. Apple Maps also just recently got updated. Now this is not exclusive to the iOS 15.3 update. This is just a server side update in the Apple Maps application. So if you go to somewhere in Australia, especially this right here, the Melbourne Cricket Ground, you can see if we tap on that, we get the look around feature so we can access this awesome feature right here, which I wish was in my city, but it's not. It's only in the major cities. You can see awesome feature here really good quality too. So things like this have been added. There's also things that got added like a comprehensive view of the roads, buildings, parks, airports, and shopping centers, and also three-dimensional landmarks of locations like the Sydney Opera House, and everything is just a lot better and updated now. A lot of this was really only in like California and bigger states like that, but now it's made its way worldwide and it's in Australia and other places as well. So super cool if you live over in Australia. So you guys know that spotlight search bug that I've been having for quite a while now where I would go in here to search and I would search for photos and it just would not work. Nothing would show up right there. Well, turns out iOS 15.3 beta one fixed that for me. So I've been having that, I believe ever since like iOS 15.1.1, one, I believe 15.2 did not fix it. And then 15.3 beta one did not fix it at first, but it seems to have fixed itself. So now spotlight search has been fixed. I don't know if any of you guys were facing that issue as well, or if it was just me, but I had it for FaceTime and for photos. They would just simply not show up. I had everything checked in settings. They wouldn't show up, but for some reason it just fixed itself here with 15.3, even though I rebooted multiple times in previous versions. Now, I also wanted to give you guys an update on the digital driver's license, because I know a lot of you guys ask me about that all the time. This is of course, where you can have your driver's license on your phone inside of your wallet, and you're gonna be able to use it at TSA. So we don't have that with 15.3, unfortunately. We probably won't get it either. It's probably gonna come at a later date, but we do know that 30 states are working on it currently, and TSA says that they're going to allow them very soon. A spokesperson for TSA said that they will begin a pilot test at two airports in February, and then add two more states around March of 2022. So 
We won't expect this to be you know, rolled out to everybody until at least March at the very earliest. It's probably not going to be until mid-2022, though, if I had to guess. But it, we are making progress, and it's looking like we're actually going to be able to use our digital driver's license, at least at the airport, pretty soon. Definitely at some point in 2022, and then hopefully by 2023, we can use them in other places, not just the airport, and then eventually completely do away with a physical driver's license. That would be the day. Now, as far as bugs go for iOS 15.3 beta 1, I mean, this is a shock for me to even say for a first beta, but I've not had a single bug with iOS 15.3 beta 1. I know, surprising. It's not my daily phone, but I do use it for multiple hours every single day, just doing things I would do on my normal phone. I text on it, I listen to music on it, you know, I control my car from it, multiple different things, even though it's on my daily device, you know, I don't leave the house super often, so I'm able to use this as, you know, my main device throughout the day. So not a single bug with it. I mean, that's a shock for me to say. And one of the main things in previous versions had to do with Apple Music, the music streaming bug the battery drain bug that is a non-issue for me now it does not drain battery at all i've tested this extensively just because i wanted to see if it actually was fixed even though apple did not mention it and it seems like it is because that was affecting me in earlier betas but it's not here on 15.3 beta 1 and it also was not on 15.2 the final release now of course just because i don't have bugs does not mean that you guys are not going to have bugs and we'll talk about that here in a moment when we get to the community poll but me so far you know not too many issues whatsoever with this first beta of 15.3 so as far as the performance goes again excellent this is the you know pretty much i think first time i've had a first beta on ios 15 be this good and it's the best build i've used on ios 15 yet it's very stable the geekbench scores are high there's no crashing multitasking is as smooth as ever i'm just very impressed with the performance here in beta one and it makes me feel better about going weeks without a new build without a beta two and then as far as battery life goes battery life is also surprisingly good i mean i fully expected 15.3 beta one to have worse battery life than 15.2 but it doesn't i'm actually getting near identical battery performance on this device so no complaints here with the battery life either now as far as ios 15.2 goes i know most of you guys are still running ios 15.2 you probably did not hop on the 15.3 beta especially since we are going into the holidays and we're not going to have any updates for a while so most of you guys are still on 15.2 and that's not bad i mean it just recently got released so there's really no reason to go jump into 15.3 beta 1 on your main device you should only do that if you have a secondary device but anyways 15.2 has been running great and i just wanted to talk about a few of my favorite things Things on it so far and first off hide my email you know now that it's fully launched with iOS 15.2 this has to be one of my favorite features in iOS 15 period so the fact that you can now toggle this straight from the mail application you know it's easy to configure and it's easy to label once you get the hang of it and I really never have to worry about my email getting added to marketing lists or you know scraped by someone who sold my user information so just a lot of great things about hide my email i found myself using it a lot now with 15.2 whereas i honestly never even used it before on ios 15 or 15.1 and then the parts and service history feature is definitely one of the fan favorites here with 15.2 but unfortunately i don't have a device with a replaced screen or battery or anything like that so it has to be an iphone 10r or newer so all my phones with replaced screens and things like that are older like the iphone 6s and 7. So I can't report to you guys on that. I have not tested that personally, but a lot of you guys have been loving that and it really helps you out when you go to buy a secondhand iPhone from eBay or Facebook Marketplace because you can check and see if it used a genuine Apple part. The people that replaced the screen or battery actually used genuine Apple parts. And then one thing I did not mention with the iOS 15.2, and this is probably because I don't have CarPlay, but CarPlay now launches the library view instead of the now playing view. So if you use the music application, Apple Music, on 15.2 and you updated and you notice a difference with CarPlay and how it launches the library view first, that is not a bug. That is apparently the intended feature there. So some people like it, some people don't. But if you have CarPlay, let me know down in the comment below if you even noticed it. And if you did, do you like the change or not? And then as far as the performance and battery life goes, again, everything is excellent here on 15.2. Absolutely no complaints. I do have some strange bugs, like I showed you guys the status bar bug and just random crashing with third-party applications. Just very, very you know, infrequently. It happens like once a week with random applications, and it's always when I'm in the middle of doing something. So really no major bugs to complain about here with 
with 15.2, which is a great sign. All right, so now let's go ahead and check out the community poll because just because I'm not having any issues does not mean you guys are not having any issues. And that's why I implement this section in my follow-up videos so you guys can see what others are facing in terms of bugs and just their overall experience. So if you go to my channel and then go to the community tab right here, you can see I asked how iOS 15.3 beta 1 has been running for you. And for me, it's going to be great. No issues. And you can see there that is the highest percentage answer aside from people who are not on 15.3. So not a ton of comments. I was very late to post this. So I'm just going to read through a couple of these here. John here says that I'm loving the CarPlay aspect of 15.3 beta one. It's been smooth and the maps enhancements are amazing, specifically on navigation. The overall system is running smooth on 11 pro max. So that is great to hear. And I was just talking about CarPlay. So really good news for those on CarPlay. You got that feature in 15.2 and it looks like 15.3 beta one improves the overall experience even more. I noticed an improvement to ProMotion on my 13 Pro Max overall seems snappier. One bug that left after a hard reset was the phone respringing when clearing all notifications. So there we go again with the ProMotion. I did not notice a difference, but again, some people are seeing an improvement to ProMotion on the 13 Pro Max after updating. iOS 15.2 made my cell phone too hot. Now with iOS 15.3, this almost never happens to me. So that is a good sign there and you use your phone every single day. So good sign right there. Alec here says so much better than 15.2 promotion feels great on the 13 pro and it feels faster. No problems whatsoever. I always appreciate your input here, Masood. I hope I'm saying your name right, but I always appreciate your input right there. I'm not going to read all of that, but I appreciate that I did go ahead and read all that. I wish I never downloaded 15.2 on my iPhone 8. Just go ahead and update to iOS 15.3 beta 1. I mean, you can always downgrade, so you may see some of your issues get resolved with 15.3 beta one. So maybe try that out. Someone says that iOS 15.3 is way faster than 15.2. That is a good sign. Sherry here says I had to redo my facial recognition. It still isn't picking it up all the time. Interesting. Is that on 15.3 or on 15.2? That's interesting there. The screen wouldn't shut off for me while I was on speakerphone. So yeah, Derek, that's happened to me multiple times ever since like iOS 14. So that is not a new issue right there and then all the way down here at the bottom somebody says android squad where are you at but anyways guys again not too many comments because i did post this late so i apologize for that but thank you to everybody who did vote in that poll i always appreciate it it always helps us all understand how the versions are running for everybody and not just for me. All right, so now what's next for Apple? And we have to move the calendar down to January because I do not believe Apple is going to release any new software until January. So iOS 15.3 beta two, I would expect that within the first two weeks of January. So it's hard to say we could get it on the week of the third or we could wait until the week of the 10th to get that second beta. It's really hard to say at this point, but I would expect it, you know, the week of the 10th at the very latest. And then we're not going to see a final release of 15.3 until sometime in February, but we could see a 15.2.1 at some point in early to mid January to fix bugs that were in iOS 15.2 and especially for Apple watch as well, which we'll talk about here in a moment. So 15.2.1, very possible sometime in January and then 15.3 sometime in February. All right, so now let's move on to some recent Apple news. And the first thing I wanted to talk about is the Apple Watch issue that I just mentioned. So some Apple Watch users, especially on the Series 7, are experiencing charging issues after updating to watchOS 8.3. So some users are seeing when they set their phone on the charger overnight, they wake up and their phone or their watch rather was not charging all along. So this happens on both the official and on third party chargers. They're just simply not working. So that's the reason I would expect a fix for the Apple watch. And of course we could get an iOS fix with that as well, which would be 15.2.1 for the iPhone. That's why I mentioned that earlier. So with that bug being pretty widespread, I would expect to see a watch OS 8.3.1 very soon at some point in January. Now, I also wanted to talk about what's going on with Apple employees right now. So Apple employees actually planned a Christmas Eve walkout after demanding better wages, benefits, and more. So the Huffington Post reported that at least 50 workers across three states had walked out or called out of work after this went viral on Twitter. So you can see here this post, this is what went viral on Twitter and a lot of people are agreeing with this that work for Apple. They say, we deserve a respectful workplace. We deserve paid sick time. We deserve protection on the front lines. 
We deserve proper mental health care. And then they say, demand that Apple upholds its image with your wallet. Don't shop in stores, don't shop online. So pretty interesting. This obviously has gone viral with a lot of people talking about this. I'm not really on either side, but if you have worked for Apple before, and if you kind of see where they're coming from, let me know in a comment down below. I'd be really curious to see if any ex Apple employees or current Apple employees have any take on this. Apple just recently launched a new application for Android called Tracker Detect. So this is a new application that will allow you to discover unknown air tags nearby. So basically it will just scan for air tags that might be following you. If somebody tried to stalk you and, you know, put an air tag on you and follow you home, you can see that now on your Android device. So according to the app, it looks for devices that have been separated from their owners. And if it finds any, it will let you play a sound on it so you can locate it. So it will actually let you play a sound on the AirTag to locate it. And it will give you instructions on how to figure out who the AirTag belongs to and how to disable it. So definitely a useful application for those on Android. We also just recently got some rumors about the upcoming iPhone 14 Pro. So the Elec is reporting that the displays will get rid of the notch in favor of the hole punch design, the hole punch display. And they're saying that the LTPO OLED displays, the panels are gonna be supplied by Samsung and LG. So this will be very interesting if the iPhone 14 keeps the notch and the pro models get rid of the notch in favor of the hole punch. We don't know if it's gonna be right in the middle or offset. I'm not sure, and I really don't know what to think about that. I mean, I never have minded the notch ever since the iPhone 10, so I'm not sure. I really don't like the look of hole punch, but I'm sure Apple will do it right if they do it at all. And then as far as the upcoming 27-inch iMac, this is rumored to be coming in spring of 2022, which is just a few months away. It's very close, and Dylan DKT is reporting that they will have a mini LED display on them, and they will come in multiple colors, similar to the colors on the 24-inch iMac from this past year, just with a darker color palette, a darker color set. So I'm really excited for the 27 inch iMac. Hopefully it's like an iMac Pro. I don't know if it's gonna be called iMac Pro, but I am looking forward to that. Of course I am using the M1 Max MacBook Pro right now. So I'd be really curious to see if it's faster and performs better. And if you guys want me to keep covering more recent Apple news, let me know in a comment down below. I put them in some follow-up videos. I don't do it every single time, but I do do it from time to time. So if you want to see it in every single follow-up video, let me know in a comment down below. But that is the latest on iOS 15.3 beta 1, iOS 15.2, and of course, all of that recent Apple news, and of course, when to expect the next iOS and iPadOS release. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future iOS videos. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.